So here I am in the MacBook. Now this process that I'm going to show you, you can actually do on any computer you want. I'm only choosing this MacBook because I actually have an external sound card that I want to use with this MacBook. And because this MacBook has a Firewire port, it's really the only computer that I can actually use this external sound card with. Secondly, because of the age of this computer, so if I jump into the system profiler, as you can see here, this is the MacBook Pro 5.5 and it's running an Intel Core 2 Duo processor clocking in at 2.53 gigahertz. So this MacBook was actually released in 2009 and because it's such an old MacBook, the latest version of Mac OS X that I can actually run is El Capitan. So currently I'm actually running Snow Leopard which is 10.6.8 and it's actually very, very difficult to find the El Capitan installer for the computer. Now, I have been able to find it, but I actually had issues trying to install it onto this computer. The other thing about this Mac is it has four gigabytes of RAM. Now, if I wanted to beef up this laptop, then what I'd do is I'd actually swap out the hard drive and I'd replace it with an SSD drive. So it'd be really, really fast access to all the files and operating system, etc. And this laptop can be upgraded to eight gigabytes of RAM. So what I'll do is I'll close out of there and then jump onto my iMac. Cool, so here I am on the iMac and this is what I'm gonna install. This is Ubuntu Studio. Now, Ubuntu Studio is absolutely brilliant. It's been around for quite some time now. And if you're a content creator, then there are plenty of things you can use to create your content. Everything from audio, graphics, video, and photography. There are just so many cool programs you can use. And a great thing about Ubuntu Studio is it actually uses quite a lot of the newest versions of software that you might wanna use. Plus it's brilliant for audio engineering because you can set up your backend really, really easily. So if I just scroll back up here, now because this MacBook Pro that I'm going to install Ubuntu Studio onto is a little bit underpowered, I'm not actually going to install the stock standard Ubuntu Studio 22.04 LTS because this version actually uses the Plasma desktop and the Plasma desktop is a little bit too heavy for the resources that I have available to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use this Ubuntu Studio installer and I'm gonna install it onto one of the official Ubuntu flavors. So if I click that link there, this opens up the page to show the official Ubuntu flavors. So there is of course the KDE version of Ubuntu, which is called Kubuntu. And there is Lubuntu, there is Ubuntu Budgie, and Ubuntu Kylin, and Ubuntu Mate, and of course, Ubuntu Studio. So if my MacBook was a little bit more powerful or more recent, then I would actually recommend installing Ubuntu Mate because it is a light version of Ubuntu. It's a little bit lighter than Ubuntu Studio and you can actually set it up to look exactly like a Mac. But what I'm actually going to install is this here, Lubuntu. Now, Lubuntu uses the LXQT desktop environment, so it's extremely light, and this will absolutely fly on my MacBook. So I'll just go through the process of installing it. I'll just go get Lubuntu. And this is actually the official website for Lubuntu. There is, of course, the Lubuntu.net website, which was actually being run by a couple of people that used to be with the Lubuntu team who went out on their own. So a lot of the packages that you'll find on Lubuntu.net are a little bit old and some of them don't even exist. And I would actually recommend not going there. Rather go to the Lubuntu.me website. So I'm just gonna go straight to the downloads page. And the latest version of Lubuntu is 22.04 LTS. LTS stands for long-term support. So this version actually is supported all the way up until 2025, which means you'll get all your updates and security patches all the way up until then. So that's absolutely brilliant. And it's also known as Jammy Jellyfish, which as you saw with Ubuntu Studio, this is also running the 22.04 LTS Jammy Jellyfish. So I'm gonna click on this magnetic link to open up my torrent client, so I'll just open it up with Cuba Torrent, which I've already installed, and then I'll just quickly download it. So I'll speed up this little bit of the video and allow the download to complete and then rejoin you as soon as that's done.
cool. So before I launch Bolina Etcher, I'm going to pop the USB drive into the computer. And as you can see here, it is actually a Ventoy drive, but I'm actually going to wipe this USB drive. So I'm going to jump into my utilities. That's an other. And I want to launch the disk utility. There we go. And then I'll select the USB drive and I'll just erase it. And I'll format it to XFAT. And that has completed. So I can now exit out of disk utility. And I now have a blank drive even though it's called Ventoy still, it's actually now a blank drive. So if I open that, as you can see, it's actually empty. Cool, so now I'll launch Bellina Etcher. And here we are in Bellina Etcher. So firstly, I'll click on Flash from File and then navigate to the downloaded ISO file. So that's this one here, Lubuntu 22.04 desktop. So I'll select that and click open. And this is showing the size of the ISO image, which is 2.61 gigabytes. So as long as you have a USB drive that's larger than that, then you should be fine. And then I'll go to select target, click that, and then select the USB drive that I inserted into the computer and then click select and then a flash. And then I'll enter my password. And that has started. So this is gonna take a few minutes to complete. So I'll fast forward the video and rejoin you as soon as it's completed. <laughs> And that has completed, so I can now quit out of Bellina Etcher. And I'll remove the USB drive from the computer. And then jump into my MacBook. Cool, so I have my USB drive, and so what I'll do is I'll shut down my MacBook. And then pop the USB drive into the laptop. And so what I want to do now is hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and then press my power button. There we go, so this is the USB drive here, so I'll select that and then click this little arrow here. And that's booted into the Lubuntu installer. So I'll select try or install Lubuntu and then press enter. And it's just going through the boot up sequence. Cool, so this is the first start of Lubuntu and I'm currently running off the USB drive. So to install it, all I have to do is double click this install Lubuntu here and this will open up the Calamaris installer. And there we go, so I'll just click Next. And then select my locale. And click Next. And this MacBook Pro that I'm using actually uses the US English default keyboard. So I'll click Next again. And so this is the current state of the hard drive. So I'm actually going to completely format the hard drive and set it up sort of the way I like to. So I'm going to click manual partitioning and then next. And then I'm going to go through each of these and then press delete. And then I'll also delete the EFI because I want to actually start completely fresh. So that's everything removed. And then I'll create a new partition table. And I'll make this a master boot record or MBR and then click OK and then select the free space and click create. 
And so the first partition will actually be the EFI or the boot partition. So I'll make this partition, if I just double click that, I'll make this about 500 megabytes. That should be more than enough. And then for the file system, I'll open that drop down menu and then select FAT32. And for the mount point, I'll open that drop down menu and I'll select boot forward slash EFI. And then for the label, I'll just call this boot. And then I'll also select the boot flag. So there we go. And then click OK. So that's the first partition. Then I'll select the free space again. And then select create. And this time I'll actually go into my apps menu and I'll do a search for the calculator, which is the KCalc. So I'll open that. And I'll just move this up here. And so what I want to do is actually work out the size of the drive that I want to use for Lubuntu. So I actually have 232 gigabytes available to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave a space at the end of the hard drive and I'm going to create a data partition later, which will mean if I ever install other operating systems on this MacBook or if I want to reinstall Lubuntu, then the data on this data partition that I'll be creating, I can just leave as is. But before I do that, I'll create a partition for Lubuntu and all the files involved to install onto. Now, I'm gonna create one about 88 gigabytes, and that way I've got plenty of room to create the data partition where I can store all my media files, etc. So to work out how many megabytes 88 gigabytes is, all you have to do is type in 88 times 1024, or 1024, which is how many megabytes are in one gigabyte. So I'll press equals and it's 90112. So for the size, I'll type in 90112. Now I'm actually gonna choose the ext4 file system to install Lubuntu onto, because currently the installer does have issues trying to install onto the Btree file system or the ButterFS file system. So ext4 it is, and then for the mount point, I'll open that up and I'll select the first one, which is the forward slash. And then for the flag, I'll scroll down this list here and I'll select root. And then for the label, I'll call this Lubuntu. Cool, I'll click OK. And then for the free space, I'll actually partition this later. So I'll click create. And then for the file system, I'll select unformatted. Cool, then I'll click OK. And that's the partitioning done. So then I'll click next, and then I'll give this a name, and then name the computer. So this is the name that will appear when your computer is on a network, so you wanna give this an appropriate name. So I'll call this MacBook Pro Lubuntu. Cool, and then give it a password. And then click next. So this is what we've just done. We've created a boot partition. This is the Lubuntu partition here, and this will actually contain both the root and the home files, but I won't actually be using home very much because I'll be using this unformatted partition once I format it as the portion of the hard drive where I'll actually place all my media files, etc. Cool, so now I'll click install, and then install now and that has started. So I'll speed up this bit of the video and then rejoin you as soon as it's completed. And that has completed, so all I have to do now is click this done button and it'll reboot the computer. During the reboot, it'll actually prompt me to remove the USB drive. But firstly, I actually have to stop the simple screen recorder so I'll do that now and then reboot the computer.